So this is what it is. A lot of questions. Who do you see first? Who need priority intervention? That means there's something there that we get to intervene or we need to see this patient. There's a bunch of them, there's 40. So individual, you're not supposed to compare with the other one. Just want to show you, if you see a question and say like that, this, this is wrong with that particular problem. And most of them are pharmacology, cardiology, and then cardiology information. So we talk about this, a client on amiodarone with elevated TSH and LFT. Do you see this patient? No, this is not a priority. You monitor their TSH, you monitor their LFT, but you got freak out with PFT. If you see PFT, yeah, I'm worried about this. This is pulmonary fibrosis, that's number one. I'm more worried about this than these two. So if the question is, who do you see first? Even though this is worrisome, TSH and LFT, you got to monitor. They are never a priority if I give you four patients, unless patient has a um, pulmonary function test that is abnormal. Yeah, that means they are, they will be, or they can say they have um, cough, chronic cough. Yeah, that's a problem. You need to see that patient. But this one, let it go. And that is the next answer question. A client on amiodarone with intractable cough. Yes, PFT will be abnormal and we have to see this patient. That is P. Crohn. If you're taking amiodarone, yeah, we're going to clone you if you have P, pulmonary fibrosis. That's number one. Okay, so this guy, we gotta see. A client porosimide with dizziness when moving from sitting to upright position. Guys, tell me, you wanna see this patient? From sitting to upright position and he's dizzy. Well, that is orthostatic hypotension. That is what is expected with ferrosumide. So you teach them, if you're getting up from the bed, please, I want you to sit at the edge of the bed and get up slowly. Don't just get up, otherwise you get dizzy. So I'm not seeing you, no matter. A client on hydrochlorothiazide and prescribed lithium for bipolar one disorder. Like I said, I'm not an examiner, but I know what they're going to trap you with, what they're going to ask you. And these are classic questions you will see in your exam. So do you see this patient? What do you think? If you're taking lithium, well, you better don't take anything that will affect the kidney or lithium. And hydrochlorothiazide is one of the things you should avoid. It's not good. So, and it causes dehydration. So it decreases your sodium too. Sodium decrease causes dehydration and affects the kidney. Therefore, lithium boy, no hydrochlorothiazide. We need to see that, this guy. Lithium and hydrochlorothiazide are enemy. If they put chlorotinidone, the same thing is hydrochlorothiazide family. A client on ferrosimide and a small purple rash on the chest. Do you want to see this patient? It's just a small lump on the chest. Why don't you go and have some coffee? Do you want to see this patient? I know you feel like you got to see them, but do you? I don't know, I'm not hearing the answers. Yes, we got to see them. Stevie Johnson syndrome. You see, it's a small purple, one single rash on the chest. It's not the whole body. And furosemide is a sulfur drug. And the sulfur drugs, photosensitivity, don't worry about it. A granulocytosis, yes, worry about it. And Stephen Johnson, worry about it. So um, I, will, I will make some video and put all the sulfur drug in there, subscriber request. Um, I don't, we don't have time, I will put them all of there. But you know most of them, amiodaron, ferrosimide, hydrochlorothiazide, um, allopurinol, all of them, uh, phenotine, carbamazepine, um, Bactrim is one of them, sulfasalazine, you know, there's a bunch of them back. Uh, subscriber request, just a quick video, 
I mean, if for you, um, okay. Okay, so we got to see this patient. Okay, five is done. Number six, a client received 12 milligram of adenosine and still SVT on the monitor. What do you want to do? Do you see this patient or just high five each other? You should see this patient when you have When you, when you have a um, patient has SVT, the management is, if they have symptoms, you cardiovert them. So symptoms, cardioversion right away. If they have no symptoms, you give them six milligram of adenosine. If you no know, respond, give them 12 milligram. If no respond, it's the same thing as somebody who, who has no symptom, who has symptoms. Therefore, this patient need synchronized cardioversion, you have to do something right away. So we should see this patient. A client on isosorbide and prescribe cylindrophil for erectile dysfunction. You wanna see this guy? He's not going to be happy, whatever you tell him. So just be careful. Do you wanna see that patient? He's just taking cylindrophil and then Isosorbide, why do you want to bother him? I think you should see him. This is a venodilator, it, it's a nitrate. Isosorbide, cylindrophil is also a nitrate. This is badness. Badness is not a word, but I put it there. That means they're going to have severe hypotension and they're going to have a heart attack and fall down, therefore, you tell them if you're taking cylindrophil, no nitrate for your blood pressure. So you have to see that patient. Don't take it. Somebody used what I said on YouTube. Yeah, don't take nitrate with <laughs> the fields. I call them the fields. The fields are no, they are not your friend when you're taking nitrate. Yeah, so don't take them. A client on warfarin and prescribe sucrophate for peptic ulcer disease. What do you think? Sucrophate is bad. They, they are always going to make a mistake. It affects absorption of warfarin and therefore they should not combine it together. They will make a mistake, they will take it together, it will code it and then they won't be able to absorb it. So you have to be careful. That one with amiodaron, you have to be careful. No matter what you teach them, it's not a good idea. They may take it together because they have to wait two hours. It's always bound mistake. So to avoid it, don't do that at all. So I got to see this patient. A client on warfarin and completely avoiding uh, usual green leafy vegetables. I said it this way. I want to see what you guys think. He's taking warfarin and all of a sudden he's completely avoiding a uh, usual green leafy vegetables. Somebody took a test. He said they keep on nagging them with this question, back and forth, back and forth to see if they understand it. Yes, they like that. They like asking that because it's clinical. Do you want to see that patient? Say, I don't want to eat very, leave you, green leafy vegetables anymore. So why, why do you want to bother me? Why do you want to bother me? I, I'm tired of it because I'm taking warfarin. Yeah, you got to tell them, no, don't do that. Keep eating the same amount you've been eating, your usual. Make your color green and just have your fun. Okay, I don't want you to get bleed. So I have to see you. Please keep on making your color green and then enjoy. But don't do more than what you used to do. If you do it once a week, go ahead. Maintain the same amount, but don't increase it or decrease it. So we got to see them. A client on Verapamine. Okay, and taking grape juice with morning pills. So verapamide, you got to recognize this. This is calcium channel blocker. Now he's taking grape juice, bad combination. 
grape juice affect the liver, CYP32A. That's the enzyme that breaks down calcium channel blocker. The grape juice attack this enzyme. So it make your calcium channel block, calcium channel blocker level goes up. That is bad. So don't combine that with this one of the teaching you provide for patient taking a calcium channel blocker. It's the same thing, nephedipine is also a calcium channel blocker. So you have to know your medication and then you, you can be able to answer most of these questions. So this guy, we have to see. So we have to see four people, uh, no four, this patient, this patient, this patient, this patient. So five people on this slide. So we are on the roll. Okay, let's go. Uh, number 11, I'll let you guys do some of them, sorry. A client on amiodarone and taking grape juice with morning pill. I already give you the answer. Same story, don't do that. Those two medication, amiodarone and calcium channel blocker with grape juice, you should not do that. The client on lobostatin and grape juice to avoid UTI. You see, I keep on hitting the same thing. So I'm giving you some of the medication. You should not take grape juice. I intentionally did that to help you guys like narrow things down. All these things, statin, amiodarone, and, um, and calcium channel blocker, no grape juice. Okay, so see this patient, see this patient. A client on propanolol for hypertension and now diagnosed with asthma. Do you want to see this patient? He has asthma. He's taking propanolol. Um, he doesn't like it. I don't think he will be happy about it. So BAM is safe. Apart from that, any beta blocker, I'm not safe. So BAM is safe in asthma. So BAM is, um, I'll write it. So B-A-M. So bisteprol, atanolol, and metropolol. All these are safe in asthma. Any beta blocker, they are non-selective. These are selective. It affects just the lung, the, the heart. Any other beta blocker law can affect the heart and the lung. And therefore, propanolol, nada law, all of them are wrong. You can take it with the asthma patient. So we got to see that patient. So BAM is safe in asthma. The rest is not safe. If there's no bisuperol, atanolol, and metropolol as the answer choice, then you got to do something else. A client on clotalidone and a glucose of 240, 250. What do you want to do, doctor, nurses? B is bisoprolol, bisoprolol. Thank you. Okay. Clotilidone and glucose of 2450. That's a high glucose. Very high glucose. You want to leave that alone? It's a thiazide. What is some of the side effect of thiazide? It's hyperglug. I expect hyperglycemia. It's not an emergency, but you got to watch it. So hyperglug. This is the side effect of the thiazides. So they have IPA, the gluc, the G is glucose. So glucose go up, L is the lipid. So their cholesterol go up, U is the uric, uracil or uric, uric acid. So uric acid goes up and C is the calcium. 
So you have uh, high glucose, high lipid, uric acid, and calcium. All this is okay with this medication. So don't worry about it. If they give you between four patients, don't choose it. That's what I mean. It's, it's high, but if I have four patients, well, I got to find something else. Unless this is the worst one. You are being sharp, so you look at it. But this just standing like that, yeah, I'm not going to worry about it. A client on epirinol and ferrosamine for heart failure. Think about it. The only thing you worry about clotinidol is hypokalemia. Yeah, somebody is helping me out there. So, number 15, what do you guys think? You have to know what this is and you have to know what it is. So I want you guys to think. Yeah, I'm seeing some good thinking, test taking skills there on the board. Excellent. So one increase your potassium, the other one decrease it. So we have a good doctor who decided this guy increases your potassium and this guy decreases your potassium. So we good, equal. Golden, I'm fine with it. So I don't need to see you. Okay, it's not a bad. I don't need to intervene. I don't need to do anything. Okay. 